irrigation engineering. Sounds complicated, but really, all the term relates to is designing a water system that can most effectively and efficiently apply irrigated water. The term gear drive is somewhat dated nowadays. These types of sprinkler heads are referred to as rotor heads. As you can see by this chart, some manufacturers have come a long way in the research and development of the best sprinkler head applicator for the job. The Hunter Irrigation Company is recognized as an industry leader in the manufacturing of these types of heads. Their testing facility that is located in San Marcos, California has been running their products through the hoops for decades and these versatile applicators and their usages of the products has provided the landscape industry the advancing technologies that have been required in keeping pace with a responsible approach to water-wise usages. The most common reason for a patch of dry lawn area is uneven sprinkler coverage. The most common reason for this situation is generally the standards that weren't applied during the original installation. In this diagram, you can see what a common practice is involving the piping distribution system that virtually marries your sprinkler heads to a hidden inefficiency. The pressure differentials that result between sprinkler heads, depending upon where they are located in the system, basically allows water pressure to force more water through some sprinklers while starving others. The cost in water over the years truly does add up. The diminished appearance of what otherwise could have been a good looking yard is most unfortunate and totally unnecessary. If you just delegate the responsibility of designing to those who possess the understanding for how to accomplish the acquirable results on paper first and then in the ground, well, you will have saved enough money to enjoy a little more life rather than being a slave to your yard. In contemplating the value that might be perceived between an inexpensive installation and one that costs you every time it waters, realize this. The savings, when done correctly, can actually pay for the entire system. How do you keep the grass greener on the other side of the road? It starts with proper design. By laying out the piping network with an understanding for hydraulics, you can achieve a greater pressure balance from the system. If, as in this diagram, you can deliver a relatively close operating pressure between all sprinkler heads, then together with matching precipitation rates and the correct nozzles, you'll have achieved much greater uniformity in the water application. In this diagram, you can identify three components that make up all soils. These are clay, sand, and silt. Depending upon the percentage of each type, a soil classification is determined, and depending upon the classifications, a watering schedule that corresponds to the site-specific soil's composition can be outlined. In considering the best irrigation practices for your yard, a fundamental component to your success will be to become familiar with your property's soils conditions. Water moves differently through different soil types and water is more or less available to plants depending upon several factors regarding soils. In this diagram, you can identify the difference between a sandy loam soil's water holding capacity and a sand soil's water holding capacity. You can see that a sandy loam soil can hold greater volume, but realize that a sandy loam soil also has a greater osmotic adherence of the water molecules. Clay soils can have more than five times the water holding capacity due to this factor, but unless the soil's moisture is at the optimum level, balanced between saturation and plant wilting stage, water may not be available to the plant. You probably have a better idea now as to how you might plan for a successful spray irrigation system outcome. During the next few slides, I'm going to introduce drip irrigation. One area involving drip that many people don't know about is the application of drip irrigation for lawn areas. Yes, that's, that's right, drip irrigated turf grass. This type of irrigation can be very, very good for saving water. 
It saves approximately 30 to 50,000 gallons of water per thousand square feet of turf grass in comparison to the spray system. That's just conservatively speaking. We have designed and installed over 4 million square feet during the past 20 years locally. And here is how we have done it successfully. In approaching a well thought out irrigation system plan, you will need to develop an understanding for what your planting environment consists of. First, as I touched on previously, identify your soil type. Here's an example of a soils test that was performed on a previous project, confirming our suspicions that we were dealing with a higher clay content. Next, depending upon the location and source of your irrigation water, a water analysis should be performed in order to identify any water chemistry constituent concentrations that can possibly exceed safe levels or create issues down the road if not known. Upon concluding the preliminary prerequisites for a successful outcome, you will need to become familiar with the functioning components of a well-planned drip irrigation system. First, filtration is a fundamental fact involving drip irrigation systems. This will be especially true if your water source is from a pond or ditch fed. If so, be sure to speak with a knowledgeable professional about the best way to approach this very important component. In most residential installations where domestic potable water is in use, a backflow prevention unit will be utilized. The type and model will be determined by the site's water pointing connection and related elevations. By choosing to address this requirement in this fashion, you won't have a need for individual problematic anti-siphon valves to be scattered throughout the yard with individual Y strainers as filters. In this photo, you can view one of our installation examples. The assembly is constructed of red brass nipples and a double union connection for easy serviceability. The backflow unit will come with shutoff valves and the black device is a 120 mesh disc filter providing water filtration for the entire system at one location for easy cleaning. Additionally, in preparing your irrigation needs, be sure to distribute hose bibs along the routing of your irrigation main supply for supplemental watering. If a fertilizer injector is utilized, a special marker should indicate that the water source should not be used for drinking purposes. At key locations throughout the areas intended for irrigation, Remote control valves should be arranged in manifold distribution assemblies inclusive of individual pressure regulators and isolation ball valves. These assemblies are then installed in a valve box in groups of two or three below grade. The low voltage control wires will run from the irrigation controller to the remote control valves. It is important to size these wires properly per the distance between the controller and the remote control valve so that the voltage required to open the valve solenoids can open correctly. Now that a successful approach has been planned out for the supply line side of the water distribution system, the layout and hydro zoning of each area involving the drip irrigation system can be addressed. <music> We thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation and are hopeful that you may appreciate the value of our participation as a resource for aiding the definition of your incoming proposals. Please feel free to contact us and on behalf of the ownership, staff, and crew of Earth Dynamics Poolscapes, thank you.